We are going to talk today about technology and systems integration in architecture. My name is Sergio Molo, partner of WCG. Uh, this uh, lecture is part of our active webinar and educational program that we have in our company. Uh, and uh, and uh, we are kindly presenting this in particular to architects and designers, because I think that is a subject of uh, of trend and it's something that will not go away certainly in the future of our projects um so let's let's go let me organize here my desktop here we go so wsg walter story design group we basically we are consultants and uh, we basically go and work in two different trades one is uh, as acoustic consultants and this is the second is as media system engineers and and uh, designers and we work for different type of projects the company was created in 1969 by architect acoustician john storick and uh, after more than 50 years of of, of work we we are a global organization uh, this is this is me here in, in, in Miami. Headquarter of the company is in New York, in Highland, New York, and we have offices and representatives and engineers and acousticians, uh, interior designers, uh, architects around the world, and that's part of our of, of our network as a team. Okay, so we are and we are very proud of it. More than uh, seventy people around the world. Uh, and different offices and, and projects worldwide. So we are extremely happy. As I mentioned, uh, Walter Story Design Group is a registered provider for AIA in their continuous education program. And this will give you one credit. And Ivan, that is uh, my assistant, will take care of, uh, of making that registration in the portal, in the AIA portal, and send you a confirmation link and uh, any problem, a certification of assistant formal. Uh, so every day we are attacking projects with a lens uh, that is our trade, the lens of architectural acoustics. So we review the architectural acoustic design and consulting needs uh, both on isolation structural acoustics and internal room acoustics and the other side of that is the systems integration basically everything related to whatever it has a non of switch audio video cctv network technology automation uh, access control everything that is related to those traits and our task is to understand on a, on a program level, understand what is the need of the project. Uh, the project could be a home theater or could be a stadium. So the, the, the program is pretty diverse and we should understand those program requirements and trying to marriage, okay, to, to be the nexus between the architecture, that is what you create, the spaces, the amazing spaces that you create and this acoustics and technology integration and make it all in one effort and we respect that art we respect the design as we are designers too but and we we want to incorporate into the art of your design the science of technology and acoustics that's what we do every day and that's the lecture that we are going to have today we work for large medium and small size architectural firms and uh, we are proud of it so we we consider partners on every of those projects where we work and for different brands some of them completely related to technical activities because that's the the world where we started we started in the recording studio world but now we are touching projects that are related to any kind of a facility as you, we are going to witness and we are going to explain in detail and uh, and of course we are doing this based on standards so we do believe on standards on codes and uh, those standards sometimes are technical sometimes are are determined by users like TripAdvisor, yelp facebook reviews but in the end it's all about experience and it doesn't matter if we are talking about the olympic committee standards or if we are talking about quietness inside of the restaurant okay uh, the what is important is the experience is how people will perform and perceive sound and technology inside of those spaces so again the challenge is to unite the disciplines of architectural acoustics and technology in order to create an, an amazing space and 
the challenge is really a challenge because there is a kind of battle of different forces, okay, architectural, the function, the aesthetics, the view, the vision of the space, and then trying to do those amazing spaces to make sounds good. And sound is not only related to the speakers, okay, but also related on how the sound will behave inside of those spaces. And that study, okay, the study of performance program sound is a, is an old story, okay? This is an amphitheater from a few hundred years before Christ, okay? And you can even see in this very specific picture that there was some kind of science about the position of someone that will be on this stage, maybe talking political or maybe creating an, an entertainment space and the audience, okay? And even at that point, there was an emulation of the hills of the mountain and how sound will behave. And that was related to the architecture. And this is how we evolved into a, a earlier acoustical spaces, entertainment spaces as, as theaters. With, with very little science, but the experience of how sound behaves. And of course, that evolves into more sophisticated spaces. Uh, so doesn't matter if you are designing the most premium, exclusive and crazy space as a, as a, as a stadium and uh, trying to get amazing experience for audiences. OK, in this case, something that could be related to sports, but also can be related to entertainment uh, or just a sports arena or a sports stadium with LED screens, speakers. This is a stadium where below the grades you have a, a shopping mall. So different functions for different moments, but in the end, all about experience. When stadiums start to have a roof, now we have arenas, and again, the multi-purpose concept is something that most of the projects today they want. They want spaces to be feasible for different uses, for different programs. Now, after the pandemic, we, we learned that in a very hard way, and we're going to talk about it. And in, but in the end, there is a vision, there is a program, and we can assist that vision and that program with the intelligent use, smart use of architectural acoustics and technology. And today we're going to focus on technology because there is no space, there is no project. As you can see in this quick gallery of our portfolio, there is no space or no project without a very deep intersection with technology. And we are talking and when we are talking about technology, that means under comma low voltage, there is no low voltage without voltage. So there is a certain interaction between all these toys, all these elements, technical elements and power and air conditioning. And of course, it's interaction with the final feel and look, the final design and the final uh, approach and design intent of these different spaces. So it doesn't matter if it's a recording studio or a restaurant. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a shopping mall or a transportation hub, an, an, an airport, a train station, a TV station. In all these cases, there is certain interaction between these factors. And today we are going to study them in, in detail, in particular regarding technology. OK, and techno the buildings have technology or the technology has a building. I don't know which is first, but in the end, it's all about the experience, the human experience. And something that we learned in uh, during the, the COVID era, okay, it's something that started much earlier than the COVID era, but it was incremented drastically during the COVID era, is the need in, in residences of a certain space to do exactly what we're doing today, but inside of a residence or a space, to have a teaching experience, a learning experience, a content creation experience, a working experience. So we give it a name. OK, we, we created the name of, of an e-studio that is a space inside of a residence or, a, or or even a corporate space that it was enhanced for this professional level of a variety of needs on AB content creation or production, remote teaching and learning or, or working at home. So doesn't matter 
what you're doing in that space. We started with the concept of the home studio or the home theater, etc. But this, because of COVID, this evolved into mission control spaces, advanced remote working office and conference rooms. Okay, we all have one in, at home today. Although we are coming back to the offices, those spaces are here to stay. And we are going to be uh, seeing the request from clients of having a mission control or an advanced remote working space in the future the techno uh, program of residences and other spaces. And the same happens for entertainment. Okay, so people have a, now there is a need, okay, after the confinements here in the States and all around the world, people want to have a space in their residences or their corporate buildings where th that is in haze for this type of experience. And that involves, again, this nexus between architecture, technology, and acoustics. So let's go back to the past to understand a little more the future, the evolution of the audiovisual experience. and and the audiovisual happens since the day the human was created just because our our brain our head two ears okay normally an axis okay a central axis so we can perceive sound coming from different directions because of these the ears positions in between uh, between our head okay and that will give us the sense from where the sounds come. That's why we, we said that we have a 3D hearing capability and that capability not only give us the sense of direction, but also the sense of quality or content. Okay, and we are able to react to the challenges of daily life based on that experience. And when it comes to that into in relation to spaces, it's important to understand that all these experiences are frequency dependent and position dependent. So every time we are listening to a sound, there is a source, okay, and there is a listening. And because of the position of the source and because of our position, we are able to determine the distance, the height, okay, three-dimensionally of that source and that sound. And that when we are studying a conference room, the design of a conference room for a corporation, and we have the source, a TV conference, a video conferencing, the position of the speakers is related to this experience. Okay, so that's why systems design, speaker position, architectural design are related because it has to make sense. When you go to a movie cinema, you notice that the sound is coming mostly from the front of the screen, but they want but when the director wants to give us an immersive experience, now the sound are coming all over the place, and that's the key. So that sense of earlier and louder means closer, okay? The directionability, it gives us uh, the, the, this transfer fraction be done between our, the source and our head, and that's how we operate. And people have been studying this a lot of time, okay, but in particular related to music, because in these concert halls, the idea was that the sound that is being generated by the orchestra is being projected nicely and evenly through all the audience, okay, and something magic happens in the end of the 19th century when someone was able to collect that information and put it in some kind of media. Remember, till that moment, the only expression related to sound was the verbal written uh, experience transmitted through generations. But this was the first moment where someone was able to capture that sound and then play it back afterwards. So uh, that's basically to consider that all this technology that we are talking about is pretty new in terms of times, okay? So, and, and that also evolved and, and because of the telecommunication protocols that also was, uh, was a big push, the telegraph, etc., etc., till we get more or less 1950. This is how a recording studio looks like in the, in the 50s, you know, 
uh, before Beatles, this more or less was the, the look. You can see that it's kind of funky, okay? And these are the Beatles recording at, at Abbey Road Studios in London. So remember the entire story of humanity, end of 19th, by mid-century, last, last century, we are now recording professionally, first in mono, then in stereo, then in quadrophone, and then in multiple tracks, uh, and but still analog in an analog domain. And and because we were able to record the content, also there was an evolution on the playback experience, okay? For the ones that are a little old, or not old, but more than maybe 40 years, you will recognize these boxes, wooden boxes that are related to speakers in the in the 70s, okay? Different types, sizes, colors, etc. more or less all giving the same kind of experience. And and then the Walkman appears. The first time that were that playback experience was able to, instead of having a social momentum, to have an individual momentum and recorded and listening on a portable way on the on the famous, not infamous, famous Walkman. That was that first approach using cassette tape. The evolution of the Walkman went the music and the sound went everywhere. There are different ways of listening to music, but it's obvious that today most of humanity are also having this individual experience through the smartphones uh, viewing earbuds. So you're going to ask why we have to concern about quality uh, of sound, etc. If most of the people are listening to music or to content, podcasts or whatever, YouTube, whatever, in earbuds. The reason is because at the same time, we are trying to get as good as possible in that experience using the most sophisticated speakers and systems. And in terms of audiovisual evolution, that the same happened at home, where we as architects, designers, we are concerned. So uh, there was no TV, there was radio, okay? People listening to the radio, the family together. When the radio evolved into the TV, the same experience went to the TV and uh, the, the the quality of the video quality and uh, the visual quality and the audio quality was so bad that everybody was really close to the object because of the, the lack of quality and, uh, and transmission. But, you know, thanks NASA, thanks going to the moon, etc., that, that evolves. We went to color, we went to stereo, we were able to record uh, at home the content, so that was also a huge evolution and today most of our experience are related to streaming media and we are we don't even have at home anymore cds physical physical media everything is related to it uh, to zeros and ones being uh, webcasting through the internet that's the experience today and the same happens with the places where we con we create the content from those old recording studios uh, and uh, the new era of recording studio starting in the 60s with Jimi Hendrix and other artists. That's our story interjects to that. And having recording studios today that even looks like homes, it's, it's, uh, and even having no studios, you know, just having a virtual representation and the Google, uh, the Google's experience. So everything, everything is happening today. A lot is happening with, as I mentioned, with smartphones, but we have an amazing array of ways to receive the content and to experiment that. So understanding that evolution, now we can go to the nitty gritty of our talk, okay? And we are not gonna talk about main voltage, the, the, the right side of the slide, we are not gonna about, uh, talk about managing high voltage or voltage, okay, 120 volts and higher in the states. We're going to talk about low voltage distribution and how that intersects into our project. So we are going to talk about how we can manage the infrastructure and its coordination through the project with everything that has a non-off switch that can be, that will give us signal, audio, video, network, etc., that has to be controlled and has to be operated uh, locally or remotely. So that's that will be the subject uh, today. 
So when you start a project and you and you are having your meeting with your low voltage specialist, or maybe you're starting your meeting with your MEP specialist, okay, and and and, and that and that program meeting you will identify the low voltage needs of your project. It's obvious that different projects will have different needs and different complexities. But if you're working on a corporate building with multiple conference rooms, multi, multiple meeting rooms, maybe even a, a small, a small uh, uh, auditorium, okay, you have distributed audio, distributed video, um, you, you, you need to be able to assist people walking through the building so you have some kind of digital signage. And uh, and all these need to be coordinated into the drawings that in the end will be part of the MEP package. Okay, but those low voltage drawings that are completely related to the program, but will have correlation with the electrical needs, but also with the interior design needs, all needs to be addressed as early as possible in the project in order to have the right, uh, the, the right infrastructure. Uh, uh, contest done by Hilton, okay, the, the, the hospitality chain, uh, people are more interested in have, knowing that they have a high speed internet versus toilet in their rooms. Is, is that crazy? Is that that crazy? So that's the, that's the importance of infrastructure and technology in our projects today. So as in any architectural project, okay, this in the same way you go through a discovery or define the schematic design design development a technical development and construction documentation etc in on the on the architectural side of the project and the mep of the part of the project the same happens on systems integration as early you can identify connect and explore with the client experience and the client the user's need Earlier, you're going to be incorporating those 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 components that that information into your project, okay? And this is critical because as earlier you get, the better it will be. You will have more time to think about it, to validate it with all the stakeholders what you need in terms of technology in every single room, okay? And and then that information will be related into system design drawings, into infrastructure drawings boxes conduit uh, j boxes etc etc power requirements at end and then you will have a bidding package that can be sent to whoever will be in charge of the implementation of that technology requirement and in the end you will be uh, during your project you will supervise that construction you will test and calibrate that is something very important because all the system needs to be customly test and calibrate and you will have the opening night with with fun. Uh, so, as detailed as you can be in that analysis of the type of spaces, understand the impact that those requirements will have with the other consultants, as electrical and mechanical. But it could also be structural, depending on the on the type of project. If you have to mount a gigantic LED screen uh, uh, hanging from the roof of a stadium that object has huge implications uh, in all terms okay the same happens with the theater but the same happens with the same screen at the lobby of a hotel okay it's an object that will have some weight some heat some power requirements and wiring uh, management okay so as good as we get with that the better it will be to that and and i i think that the, the last sentence of this slide is important uh, try to to make the project being managed by design and by the user needs and not by equipment sales okay we've seen a lot of projects where instead of adding a consultant you are adding someone that wants to push or sell certain equipment and that goes in detriment goes against the quality of the project because the program is not king is the sales so as a reminder of that and you know that in the uh, in the systems world we like these acronyms without the bhs hdmi cd dvd you know all these all these concepts but you know they they have a reason uh, basically to simplify um, to simplify the, the, the words but 
and you're used to that and you and you we are going to continue uh, looking to this acronym so that that's part of the lingo of what we do so which are the elements that that program needs to address which are the components on a system design that we need to be taking care in that a particular phase okay of programming audio when i say audio think about the entire change okay you have the content maybe the content is the music coming out from from an, from an ipad okay you have the content you have to convert that content into something that can be transmitted okay maybe you bluetooth to wire analog or digital then that signal will go to some kind of digital processor that will determine the volume the equalization etc that signal will go later to the amplifiers and the amplifiers will go to the speaker so that chain that could happen all in one when you have your your bluetooth speaker everything happens in that device but when you have a building that's infrastructure okay and the same happens with video you have cameras or video content that will go and convert it into a signal that signal will be managed will be transmitted with copper or network okay and then will go to displays automation is the way we we are able to identify all of these elements and give them a function or, or create scenes of functions the control is how we are going to access to those different elements okay the network is what we used to, to call the data teleports you know the, the the data network the it communication between the building and this subject is huge because today a lot of things happens through that network that could be wired or wireless so you have different ways of communicating those signals okay and those those signals normally are also carrying data they are carrying your internet your they are carrying maybe your telephone system uh, and sometimes that network also carries your cctv system your your cameras for security your access control all is part of that network okay uh, alarm fire and safety that are part of the part of the mep responsibility it's also touching in different moments uh, the the system the systems integration of low voltage okay and the same happens with HVAC because sometimes you want to control the HVAC through a centralized system and the same happens with power and the same happens with with lighting so there is a huge array of elements that are related to the systems integration design that are related to all the other consultants and trades through a building okay so in that infrastructure design we have to think about all the elements that will have that will have a none of switch that we will need to access control it and operate it and uh, sometimes if things go wrong okay that's that's a little joke uh, but um, shit happens as you all know but we are trying to avoid water coming through outlets but you know it's it's a joke but this happened first and and the second is sometimes the wrong voltage okay the wrong bit, the signal goes to the wrong outlets and that's yes that's something that could happen or you having your bolt your main voltage management pretty close to the low voltage and you have a, a, a wrong interaction between them or interference so that's why we are showing this slide so when so let's talk about once we identify all the things that are related to this low voltage management in the computer world we can we can convert it into a centralized intelligent system management and we call that bms or building management system that that computer with different interfaces that computer will talk with all these different systems that we uh, reviewed before okay your fire system your access control your audio and video a digital manager content manager your your alarm system and also sorry and and also lighting control small control so everything could be managed and motorized monitorized and uh, and get your status through this centralized 
building management system. Again, technology allow us to have that building management system or house management system in, on an app in your phone. That's a beauty. But, uh, and, and there is, there is a, a space and a moment for each type of solution. But today we are able to save power to be more efficient in our water management, in our AC management, just of having some kind of centralized, intelligent management system for the building. And that, that system, as I mentioned before, will touch different, different trades. It will touch the MEP because of air conditioning, electrical and lighting control, okay? It will type, touch safety because it can be controlled and connected into the, your alarm uh, system, fire system, and those access controls and CCTV. Can be, uh, it will be definitely related to your IT, your network, your data tel intercom uh, uh, intrusion safety. Okay, for the for your network, your wifi and wired infrastructure, and everything related to what we call infra entertainment, but could be not for entertain. That is your audio, video, digital signage, and Zoom. Okay, so imagine uh, the the world without Zoom today will be very complicated. Okay, Zoom or Meets or uh, or Teams. So all can be central. The, all the system could be centralized, and in order to get to this point. You need to understand all the different subsystems and understand the program. Uh, in the end, that computer, okay, will be accessed through an interface. That interface, again, could be your phone, could be an iPad, could be a, a, a wall panel. But remember, what you're seeing here as an interface is something that gives us a visual representation of all the subsystems that this computer are managing through your Crestrum, your AMX, your Savant, or you name it, the brand, they are all basically conceptually the same. Computers with a certain intelligence and interfaces to interconnect that computer into the different subsystems. And in the end, you have a user-friendly, in this case, control panel, okay? Depending on the type of project, okay? And most of that communication between this central computer and all the other subsystems happens through a network, a wired or wireless network that interconnects that BMS system with the different subsystems. And it could be as crazy as this, okay? It could be a mission control of, uh, for NASA or for SpaceX, okay? It could be as crazy or, or a nuclear plant, okay? or it could be a, just the safety of a mall, okay? The safety room of a, of a mall, or it could be just you controlling through your iPad or your phone, what's going on in your house from, from the distance. A, that infrastructure that we, just, a, that we just commanded will go, will be related sooner or later to so some kind of room that will have requirements of temperature, humidity, and safety for the equipment that will manage all the systems. Sometimes it's as stupid as an equipment closet, sometimes could be a complex CMR or central machine room, depending on the size of the, pro of the project, okay? But in the end, you will have, if you're talking about a sophisticated project, a rack, okay? a rack that will contain equipment and that equipment will be interconnected with other equipment through wires and those racks, those elements will require power, okay? And those elements will create heat and we have to make sure that we are uh, carefully attending to those needs. The same happens with lighting control. The lighting control could be as easy as a, as a dimmer uh, controlling your lighting fixture. But if you want to have a centralized lighting control system that is also related and, and connected into your BMS, you will end up having electrical lighting panels that will host the computers, okay? The computers, the, the, these elements are switches and computers that will control your lights through different dimmers or circuits. And that requires space. So when you're in early planning of your project, if you're gonna have a complex 
a lighting control system, you need space to host their panels. Normally, sometimes in the same room as the electrical panels, but sometimes a lighting control will go at the same place where the BMS or the audio video infrastructure goes, depending on the project and its interaction. As we mentioned before, this BMS system could have an interaction, a direct interaction, or at least sense the status of your electrical rooms, panels and generators. So again, even low voltage do not touch high voltage, could talk with high voltage, and that's important. Uh, and the same happened with all the, uh, when, when, when we are mixing all the rooms in one, you can have the electrical panel, the lighting control panel, the low voltage panel, and the audio video equipment, maybe be, being at the same time. But you can see that that infrastructure is starting to get complex. So again, when you're designing your space, do not minimize the areas of your building that will have, that will host these rooms, these panel rooms, these clo electrical closets uh, for sure, but certainly the low voltage closets or the, the AV rooms, as we normally call it through your project, okay? Depending of, on the size of the project, okay? You could even have a, an audio video control room, a place where all this technology uh, lives, and also you can have an operator that is monitoring what's going on and that will require a space only when you when you're doing an auditorium this is more obvious because of the operation uh, requirements but it could be around around any kind of space this is th this picture is is cool because this is the control room of the pelo peloton cycles you know the the peloton cycles that you you're getting your spinning classes okay this is the room where someone is controlling the cameras Okay, like, like uh, on a TV studio style, the cameras coming from the spinning studio, okay, converting all that information into data, okay, and that data is being streamed and goes to every to gigantic servers and later from there to each individual bicycle around the world. So even in that kind of scenario, the concepts are the same. You have cameras, you have microphones, you have consoles, you have switchers, uh, all the information is transmitted, converted, and packaged through data. That data goes to some kind of cloud, that cloud distributes the information to the rest of the users. One of the things that are come, uh, picking up a, a lot of attention and uh, are basically present in every single project today is the idea that we can manage audio and video over IP, what we normally call AV over, over IP. That means that all your audio and video signal, okay, it's been once you have the camera or you have a microphone or you have the source of music or your cable box or your computer, whatever source you have, that information is encoded through different boxes okay and converted that information into a certain specific type of data okay and that data goes to a typical ip switch okay but the the, the beauty is that I, I as i'm encoding all the elements that encoder and the object that i have behind can be it's an ip address and that ip address can be controlled through the same kind of software protocols as i control computers okay so now you have an, in, an intelligent system that controls audio and video over the network, okay? I can control it, I can manage it, and then I can determine where all these signals are gonna go. They will go to a TV, they will go to a video wall, to an LED screen, a projector, speakers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But imagine that instead of managing hundreds of miles of copper for audio and or video, now you're managing data through CAT6 or fiber optics. That's a huge change. The amount, the saving in infrastructure, you, you require more thinking, you require intelligence, but there is huge savings in infrastructure, conduits, uh, panels, et cetera, et cetera, by managing audio and video through uh, over IP. And this is the, the, the present. This is not, not the future, is the present of 
uh, integrations. So when you're watching, uh, you're, you're going to a hotel and you're watching TV, the new hotels, the signal that loads the TV is no longer an HDMI cable or a video cable. It's just network going to the TV. And there is a decoder inside of the TV that converts that data that came through the network after a switch, after router switches, etc., and the TV is doing the conversion or a certain box is doing the conversion, the decoding of that information uh, through the systems. Okay, so this is very interesting and it's valid for a lot, a lot of different projects. Okay. Uh, again, security control rooms, so uh, multi screens, etc., etc. Again, mostly run by video over IP. The security camera that you that you most of the security cameras that are being installed today in the world they are PoE. It's power over the Ethernet. That means that in the past you used to have power to the camera and the video signal coming out from the camera going through uh, the system. Today, through the same network cable, you're giving power to the to the camera and transmitting the content from that camera into this network. Okay, so this is something also interesting that is saving time and money during installation. This is what I was related. The, the analog cameras and the digital cameras, they look basically the same, but it's completely different the way they are transmitting their their signals okay and more or less the same happens with access control we used to have everything was power and video and data today everything is data okay so this uh, this access control both both for face recognition or a fingerprint or codes or fobs etc it's it's a network uh, related uh, event okay so very important that for your infrastructure. And the same happens with digital signage or displays or any kind of visual in, in small or large spaces. A huge network will allow us to bring the right content into the right place, okay? Again, depending depending on the object, we will, you will need power, yes or no. In this case, large displays will require power, but then the rest is managed by a network. Okay, so as I mentioned before, program description, okay, systems narrative, okay, that's that's a process, understand the program, create a system narrative in plain language so all the stakeholders can relate it, can read it, it's not in, in technical languages, in, in a very plain language so everybody, the different users from management to operations, everybody can relate to that narrative and validate the, the system the requirements. And then we start with equipment specification and list. From that list, we can start creating heat and power loads that will go to the other consultants. And with that validated, we can start with the layout and topology of conduit uh, and infrastructure of this system. That, after that, we can go back to the boards go and create a system design diagram okay that will go to the installer and a final equipment location and distribution that will be coordinated with your interior designer architectural and MEP. that's basically the process okay so system narratives could come in different tastes so you can have like a like a chart room by room so for example you have here a build uh, in a building the different levels every room has a number what the function of the room what type of space it is, and which are the requirements for audio, video, interactivity, network nodes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can make this this narrative in in a in a graph mode, or you can do it on a narrative uh, text mode. But in the end, it's a way of simplifying the function and the different uses of each space. That narrative will give will bring us to an equipment list. Again distributed by space, by function, and by need. That initial equipment list will bring us heat and power loads because we can assign a heat and power requirement, a, an emission, to each different element allocated in different spaces, and that information will go to the MEP team, okay, as part of that, and that will give us 
very valid information of the requirements in BTUs and AMPs for the different rooms and different locations, and that is super critical for the MEP to create their system. And as I mentioned before, we are going to identify if there is a need or not of a CNMR or an equipment closet or any specific special area related to the management of this infrastructure. Okay. And that information will also get us a, what we call a visual system design. So we can start a designing on a visual way. So this is an evolution of that first narrative. It's a system a diagrammatic visual representation that will give us the, the name and type of each main component and the and the way we are going to interconnect them okay and that's the initial part of the system the final system design that will also relate to uh, wiring diagrams and, uh, and and all the different components uh, that are related to that okay and on in parallel we will be creating what we call the low voltage architectural drawing that is the interaction the coordination between lighting rcps junction boxes uh, smoke detectors speakers everything all in one okay so we want to see that in the place where we are planning to have a speaker for example on a reflexive ceiling we don't have a conflict with a sprinkler with a, with a smoke detector a light or anything related to that and that's a, a, that's a visual decision it's an interior decision it's an infrastructure decision but in the end it will give us the infrastructure and topology and topography uh, of uh, of that low voltage management okay so we are now heading the end of the uh, of the presentation so these advanced technology requirements and improved acoustics we are seeing them appearing in every basically in almost every building that we are touching we see that, that there is a huge need of understanding in deep and to anticipate those needs uh, uh, as early as possible that saves tons of times and money uh, for for you that are architects you know that time management during the the design phase are critical and everything that we can anticipate during the design phase will save money in construction administration and supervision so that's uh, that's very important and today in reality even if you want to have invisible technology speakers that you don't see visuals that appear magically okay or wireless infrastructure those ideas are possible so the, it's it's up to you guys to push the limits in your creativity and it's up to people like us to give us to to give you solutions in order to make that happen so remember we, we go back a little back and forth through the story okay the in the perfect world that binaural or stereo experience okay that that experience is getting crazier so we have the surround and the surround it, 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 the 5.1 that you i'm sure that you listened to that concept before uh, that surround experience evolved into Dolby Atmos or the immersive uh, experience where you have multiple speakers in order to give you that 3D representation of audio, okay? And, and when you relate that infrastructure or those requirements into real spaces, you start seeing that you have multiple speakers. That means that you have to pay attention multiple times to objects that will need a box, a wire, and, and, and will be a technical element that could be visible or not, okay? And, and today, that, that part for the ones that are designing theaters or cinemas or, or uh, any entertainment spaces, this uh, immersive three audio, uh, remember that, that first slide of the guy, the, our three audio experience, now we are trying to make that three audio experience valid in both the creation, the content creation spaces, and also in our uh, entertainment spaces. Doesn't matter if it's a home theater, okay, at home, it's a, or it's a private cinema, or a, a VIP, a IPIC style a cinema, or, or a large space. And all that, all, as I mentioned, all ideas are, are possible, technically speaking. This is just at Lincoln Center. Rafael Vignoli was the architect. Uh, 
the Columbus Circle in New York shouting at 110 dBs. And inside you want to have a quiet space with perfect audio to have a lovely singer playing jazz and, and or, or making a presentation. So the matter of acoustics, isolation, internal room acoustics and technology, speakers, visuals, theatrical lighting, immerse into a magically created space that's that's the, the magic that interaction that nexus between the the vision of the architect and how we can make uh, spaces to 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 be amazing like in this case placing the speakers inside of glass in, in this recording studio and uh, or having a conference room inside of glass okay and to make it happen and not creating an echo chamber so everything that is related to that design that is a vision of an architect then we'll have an interaction of acoustical performance and technology integration okay and, and i think that that's uh, interesting it doesn't matter the the reason of the space okay if it's for creating content to perform content okay the interaction of architectural technology and uh, uh, and acoustics is 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 valid okay uh, and this is the end for today. And you feel free to ask uh, any question. I see a question here, so I will try to answer Tim. Uh, in your experience, what is the penetration and proliferation of fiber optics, uh, most limited to longer on hold transmission, etc.? Okay, yes, fiber optic has a place in buildings, in particular for long for long distances, okay, or massive amount of data. Okay, remember that what happens in one fiber optic cables is equal to more or less a hundred network cables. So, uh, so there is a place for fiber optics, in particular when you're trying to move in, in between buildings or if you have a a building a vertically there, and if if your room uh, if your main room is uh, or or uh, underground or up in the in the higher roofs and the higher floors you can have fiber optics basically to move your data uh, vertically or horizontally in long distances there is a place for everything it's still a little expensive yes okay and but there is a place for fiber optics in different buildings okay um what is the best solution available for automation for studios and office spaces okay i, I can tell you that all the brands all, all the major brands that are available today as i mentioned before crestron amx savant all, all the even apple devices or even google devices are will do the part will will uh, will achieve the goal okay the key with automation is to not over design the systems because sometimes you want to control everything and in the end you're only in in, in the practice in practically you're only on a daily basis controlling very very few elements so uh, but those are the brands today that will it represent a right solution to your projects okay so in terms of brands but again program first do not over design the automation now i want to have everything I, I have a residence and i want to have everything controlled with my iphone and in the end the only thing that you're doing is turning uh, uh, the volume of your music and changing the thermostat so you you go crazy controlling things that you never touch so I think that that's uh, on a program basis. That's uh, that, that's uh, the right way to do. From Rocio, uh, which projects you can refer as the best architectural acoustic integration and why? I think that um, when it comes to hospitality, okay, uh, you will see a, a, a very interesting way of integrating architecture because there is there are standards on the hospitality in particular in four and five stars there are standards you have a very complex uh, system involved with changeable users that means that they although the users are typified they are changing every day and you have to fulfill a lot of different needs from different clients so i think that in the hospitality projects 
all uh, all main brands are making a huge efforts on giving you experiences like the one when you enter the room and you see your name on the screen of the TV. That means that there is a building management system that is integrating accounting, check-in, okay, and check-out, entertainment, audio, video, and your visuals. That's that's that means that there is certain intelligence behind the scenes going on for that to happen, and certainly. And certainly that TV that is receiving, that is able to place your name in that dashboard main screen is, re, is connected to a certain building management system uh, that is uh, related to the project. So I think that in hospitality, uh, big, big uh, efforts have been done uh, for, for that uh, uh, to happen. I, I hope that I, I responded that. Um, in, I think that Edgar is placing a question. You can place it on the Q&A. It's going to be the easiest way to do it. Okay, with Dolby Music taking over, do you think uh, Dolby Mixing Studios will become more in e-studios? Okay. Dolby is guilty to trying to control the world. Okay, they want to conquer the world. They, that's That's their mantra. That's the way they operate. Okay, uh, even all the other competitors to Dolby in the cinematic experience, in the in the film mixing, in in the film theater experience, uh, were killed by Dolby. You know, remember THX by George Lucas, uh, DTS, uh, Auro, all the other competitors. Basically, they have a huge trouble fighting against the monster. I, I, in my opinion, uh, what will happen is that the content will always be the king. Content will try to find a way to represent their ideas in the best way. A Dolby Atmos is a is a very interesting way of representing immersive audio. Uh, and uh, now that Dolby realizes that people would like to mix in immersive audio in a even in a non-certified space they open the doors to a more creative use of their platform okay so yes i see more what we call the e-studios or the small studios in embracing that technology but again in order to embrace it you need infrastructure you need to have speakers on the ceiling speakers subwoofers on the back you you need a lot of new infrastructure so the challenge will be more related to who is going to be doing it right Okay, and to do it right, you need some kind of advice and you need infrastructure to, to, to rule it. Uh, the music industry, that's a bigger, a bigger conversation. Uh, we, we are living in a, in a non-centralized uh, universe that now it's kind of becoming centralized again because we, we went out from the, rec the record labels and then we are all listening to music through Spotify, Apple Music, uh, uh, Amazon Music, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we are we went to a very centralized, dominated by record labels, and centralized with the democracy of streaming audio, and now coming back to a centralized system. That's why, and we are participating in those projects: uh, Spotify, Apple, Amazon. Pandora, they, those are streaming companies that now are in, entering into the content creation. That means they are having their own recording studios, et cetera, et cetera. In the same way, Netflix was a streaming and now you have Netflix as producer. Okay, and the same happens with Apple and all uh, and other uh, content creation. So that, that's, that's the challenge, okay? In the end for us, uh, I am a musician engineer. For me, anything that creates democracy uh, in terms of uh, of people from around the world, no matter the resources they have, being able to create a content and being able to put that content available to everybody, that's that's super cool. That's super cool. That's my personal opinion, and and that will push technology to the next level. Okay, in in different ways. Uh, Everything is going to a more wireless mode. We we all notice my laptop is connected wireless to the network. My phone, that's basically my life. And you're listening to this lecture around the world 
uh, in your comfort of your house or your office. And I'm sure that a big portion of that connection is also wireless. So wireless is the future of all this. For certain things, I will not trust wireless only. That means that if I'm a, in a hospital and I want, uh, I need to monitor a patient, okay, uh, and I have his his vital signals coming from some kind of data, I would like to have a wire there, okay. I, I think that that will be at least that will be my my personal my, my personal approach to the subject. So there is a there is a place and a and a moment for for all of these uh, subjects. Okay, I have Felix uh, Pereira. Uh, you want to talk? I am allowing Felix to talk. Please go ahead. You can you have to unmute your microphone. You want to talk. Okay. But if not, you can put you can place your uh, your question on the on the Q and A. So we 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 done it in one hour. I I hope that you have fun. Uh, that it was entertainment and educational. You can reach me uh, in, on my email. That is uh, Sergio at wcg .com. Uh, you can visit our website for more information. And again, uh, you're going to be receiving an email from Ivan uh, with the certificate of assistance to this lecture. And uh, and uh, the things the they'll use are going to be posted on the portal. Uh, so thank you very, very much for uh, attending this. And I hope you have a safe day. Stay safe. You can get the bags, get bags. It's it's the easy way of being safe altogether. Love you and have a wonderful afternoon.